How's it going? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. How are you? Not too bad, not too bad at all. On location in Toronto, getting ready to start a new project. And now I've took the time aside to talk to you. Awesome. Well, well thank you for doing so, because um, I had a great time watching this movie. It's, yeah, I think it's one of those great 90-minute films. It just keeps you hooked from start to finish. And I guess to begin with, I wanted to ask you, what was it like shooting that plane crash sequence? Because that comes on very early in the film. I know you're not dealing with a massive budget here, but really mm -hmm. effective piece of filmmaking, I thought. That's awesome, man. Yeah, thanks for that. I think a lot of our budget went into that plane crash sequence, in fact, because we were in a fuselage on a gimbal on a soundstage that was on hydraulics. And so it would shake and, and do what it needed to do. Um, and it's, it's always kind of fun to shoot those sorts of sequences, you know. And even after as long as I've done what I've done in this industry, I still get a thrill out of this sort of movie magic of it all. And who knows long, how long that's going to last with AI. But, but you know, it's an amazing thing when you do have such a small budget for an independent film, such a short shooting schedule. And uh, to see it come together in an effective manner is really rewarding. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, on that note, obviously it goes without saying you guys aren't fighting off a real lion in a movie like this. But, but again, those lion attack scenes... They're shot in a way where, again, it keeps you on the edge of your seat and it's, it's a mm. pretty scary thing to watch. But for you, what were those like to shoot? And is it part of the fun for you to use your imagination as an actor to enhance moments like that? It absolutely is. You know, I think that's becoming more and more um, a requirement, uh, sort of having to act opposite something that isn't there in, in certain regards. Um, you know, the reason why I wanted to do this film, I had worked with McClendo once before, um, but when he pitched, it's such a simple concept in some way. You know, the idea that you're on this plane that goes down in a, in a reserve for big game and no one knows you're there. And it's one of those concepts that you can easily put yourself into. You know, you could think of what would I do in that situation? What would that be like to actually experience uh, so I think there's some kind of relatable aspect to it in that regard where, it, you know, you could think about it being you. You could think about it being anyone who would be out of their depth in, in a situation like that. And and I've always liked survival movies, you know. Um, but, yeah, the challenge of uh, I think that's why we're all kind of a little bit crazy, us actors, is because we do have to use the the extreme uh, reaches of our imagination um, at times when, you know, there's actually nothing really there. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, Andrew, he he's not an action hero, but as you say, that this is a survivor film. Um, mm. But when it comes to, obviously, you've done a lot of action roles in the past, like Shooter, for example, but the physicality for a project like this, when you're playing a guy who isn't an action hero, who's like, you know, great with guns and great with fighting things off. What's that like for you as an actor to deal with that different side of the physicality, would you say? It's actually really difficult, you know, to have that kind of restraint because often I play the protagonist. Often I've played the guy who can kick some ass, you know. And so uh, I have to um, keep that part of my, my, my past in check or whatever it is. You know, there's the scene where... The, the the warlords, as it were, or wh whomever come across us and they're kind of like smacking us around and stuff. And I'm used to playing Bob Lee Swagger, you know, and throwing somebody over a balcony. And so it's just it's an adjust adjustment. You know, the, the, there is a theological thread of sorts to this film and, and conversations with God in, in some ways with my my character who whose wife is a missionary and who. You know, because of that being part of her life, she urged him to leave Western medicine and go, you know, minister as a doctor in, in, in Africa. And I think that in the past, he probably wasn't a religious person and it was his wife that led him down that road. And so I think filtering some of those moments through those prisms is, is, is a large part of it, you know, that, you know, your average doctor is not a fighter you know, too. And so, um, and he's a man of peace and a man of God at this point in his life. And so I think restraint is the answer there that I had to play both on screen and as, as the actor who's used to mixing it up and kind of fighting a bit. 
Yeah, and you know, so I thought it was great to see you do something again, like you said, that maybe differs from your past roles, and of course, emotionally as well. Andrew's without spoiling anything early on, he goes through a big trauma in the movie, and that then reverberates throughout the rest of the film. So, what's it mm. like for you to delve into that and and play that side of things as well with the character? Well, you know, Makunda, who again I said I, I had worked with once before, um, is a very spiritual guy himself. Um, He's an author as well as a writer, director in, in film. And um, he was even a monk for seven years in India. Yeah. Um, and so a lot of conversations that he and I have in a core part of our friendship are, are discussions about those sorts of things, theological things, metaphysical things, ontological things. And um, and so, you know, I think that, you know, d dealing with or addressing the notion of horrendous loss um, there is a point in the film where you clearly see my character has gone numb and has decided to check out and says to God, you know, essentially, I'm going to sit here under this tree and see what happens. If I get eaten by a lion, I get eaten. Um, you know, so there's a surrender there. And um, yeah, I think that was also one of the emotional things that really appealed to me about this. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, you've mentioned a couple of times, obviously, faith is really important to this character. So is that something you enjoyed delving into as well and, and how that affected him and and just with your own personal life did that come into play at all with that um it absolutely i absolutely do i mean i study so much about spirituality and religion metaphysics um I, I find it the most interesting and most worthwhile place to spend my time in regards to reading and learning i think it's it's you know we are all connected um I certainly have a strong uh, belief in God, and and um, um, and so I, I, I love exploring those themes. And um, yeah, it was interesting. You know, when we made this film, it was sort of at the beginning of my spiritual quest that I've been on for the past year. And not to say that this instigated or motivated that, but in retrospect, it's interesting timing because a lot of this last year has been very much about a personal spiritual explore, exploration for me. Oh, awesome. And yeah, I know those themes are something I'm sure a lot of people are going to appreciate. And, you know, Makunda, I I've, I've saw, I've saw in a statement he called this film extraordinarily difficult to shoot. But were there any challenges for you working on this one? Because again, I know, like I said, you're working with a low budget, quite a small time frame. And I thought the end result was awesome that you came up with. Yeah, my friend, it was a very, very difficult shoot. And, you know, you you read a script and you have nothing but the best intentions and hopes for not only how it's going to turn out, but what the process of shooting it will be like. And we were just, we had a lot of issues behind the scenes that made it difficult and weather issues that made it difficult. And um, it's interesting because we were trying, we were kind of surviving the shoot as we're playing a uh, part in a survival story. Um, luckily, all the actors are very like-minded. I had always wanted to work with Emil Hirsch. I always enjoyed him on screen. And he and I hit it off uh, so so quickly and uh, so completely. And we work, uh, approach the work a lot a similar way. Um, I, you know, had there been attitudes amongst the cast or otherwise um, that weren't positive, I think it would have been even more challenging. But yeah, I mean, and this is the thing too. It's like, I've worked on every size of film, you know, Flags of Our Fathers with Eastwood was a hundred million dollar movie. You know, this certainly wasn't, you know, and everything in between. And there's always challenges, you know, that you have to face, overcome, um, but it was a difficult shoot and very much so for Makunda. Yeah, well, as I said, I thought the end result, you know, it comes together great. And another interesting Thanks. aspect of your character, you spend a lot of the movie beaten up physically as, as well as emotionally, as we talked about. Mm -hmm. So does that, when you're in that makeup, you know, your, your leg is torn up, you're, you're very much beaten up facially as well. Does that help you get into the mindset of a character like this, But when you have that to show as well? It does. It does. You know, another aspect, we had none of the creature comforts that you're used to really on a, on a film set. Um, our trailers were so far away from where we were shooting because you needed these long views of, of, of nothing because that's the whole point is that we're in the middle of nowhere. And uh, we really spent the majority of time, in all the time in between takes on set 
and we were dirty and you've got the fake sticky fake blood all over you and you know and that stuff wears on you it's 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 not pleasant necessarily you know it's not glamorous but it does feed the situation in some superficial senses you know um it, it does put you in a mindset and you do feel desperate in some ways i remember our food was not very good water was hard to come by <laughs> you know it's like people think that movies are uh you know a walk in the park and you're just being treated like a king or a queen not the case on this one. <laughs> oh, I'm I'm glad you survived the experience. And it's like, you know, you did have a great cast around you. You mentioned Emil and, you know, I wanted to highlight him because his character and Andrew, there's that t underlying tension and it comes out, you know, various points throughout the movie. So the two of you, did you have a lot of time to work on that back and forth? Or were you kind of thrown in at the deep end and just had to find that as you went? It was much more of the latter. Um but we, you know, we had known each other socially a little bit. We had a lot of friends in common. I don't think there was a lot of mystery as to whether or not we'd get along or connect that way. And we did do a fair amount of what you're talking about in breaks between setups and, you know, discussing how we would handle certain scenes and that sort of thing. But more and more these days, man, these producers don't want to pay for rehearsal time. It's like so many important aspects of, of, of filmmaking are being excised because for cost, you know? And it's really s sad for me. I, I, I love rehearsal. I love finding um, the essence of the material with the actor and the director beforehand, but, but it's just becoming less and less the, the, the way that things are, are done. Yeah, I mean, that's a shame, you know, it's a real shame to hear, but again, I do think the film came together great. And talking about bigger projects, I, I came across an interview today from way back in 2015 where you talked about meeting with Marvel. And I know there was speculation at the time, maybe that was for Iron Fist on Netflix, but is there anything you can say about what you talked about back then? Because I know it generated a lot of excitement at the time that you might be heading into that superhero role. Um, I don't think I will be ultimately... I, you know, I don't know. It's I, I, I enjoy those films at times, but I don't know if it's a world that I need to inhabit. I think it's something that I can enjoy as a fan. But at, at one point there was discussion about meeting on, on Captain America. There was discussion about Iron Fist. Um, and you, you know what, you'd never say no to, to something like that necessarily, but um, I don't know, it didn't work out. And I tend to think maybe for a reason and um you know, maybe I wasn't in the right place or it wasn't it, it wasn't the right fit. But uh, I enjoy those as a fan. But that doesn't mean that doesn't necessarily mean I need to be in them. Yeah. It's cool to hear because, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm a comic book fan. I remember you mentioned Captain America. Your name did keep coming up. Fans wanted to see mm -hmm. that. But you got no regrets about missing out on those at all. And you're, you're happy to do projects like this. And like you said, jump between indie projects and bigger ones when, when as you feel like it, I guess. Yeah, man. And going back to the spirituality of it all, I feel I do feel that things happen for a reason. And, um, you know, who knows what has transpired in my life that I may not have been. You know, the other thing is things have changed drastically for me personally as a father. It's like I have three children that really takes a lot of your time and effort and focus and deservedly so. Um, and so I'm a lot more free in regards to when something does or doesn't work out, you know, um, and I, I, I try to give them as much time as, as I possibly can. And certainly when they were even younger, but, um, yeah, I have, I'm, I, I've, I'm able to kind of take things as they come and, and, and I harbor no, you know, disappointments really for very long, which I guess is a healthy thing. Yeah, well, that's cool. And anyway, your shooter character, I would say, more badass than a lot of superheroes anyway. But just... I agree with you. <laughs> One final and he question. was real. <laughs> <laughs> real but... Yeah, man. Well, it was great. That was a great series. But one final question about this movie. I know you guys, you said filming in South Africa culturally. I know you probably weren't over there for too long. Was was that a fun thing to, you know, to explore the country and, and see a different side? Because it feels like... I know maybe it's that magic of filmmaking, but it looked like you guys were really out in the wilds to, to shoot this one. Well, it was it was a bit of, of the magic of filmmaking. I have shot in uh, South Africa a couple of times. My first movie with Ridley Scott, White Squall, we shot a bit in uh, 
in Cape Town. And then I did a movie called The Bang Bang Club a few years back. True story about these uh, war photographers during apartheid. And I was shooting in Joburg on that. So um, I have a great deal of love for, for that region. Um, I'm actually looking forward to going back within the next year or so on a personal vacation trip. Um, I've never done a safari yet, which is something that I'm dying to do. Um, but, you know, we did shoot some of this in, in California and it was composited, believe it or not. You know, if you drive 40 minutes north of Los Angeles, that's what they use to double for Afghanistan, for Iraq, for Africa. There are these movie ranches out there where you can't tell the difference. You can they will show you photos of, of one of the planes in Africa and then they'll say, look, this direction, that's where we're shooting. And it's nearly identical. Um, so, uh, it's kind of cool that part, again, that part of it, even after 30 plus years, I still get a kick out of that. Oh, that's so cool. And it just goes to show how great this film came together. So Ryan, thank you so much for taking the time today. As I said, I had a great one watching this. I've been a fan of yours for a while and I look forward to people thank you. checking this one out. So thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Awesome to meet you. Cheers, man.